Okay, so we've got the easy stuff out of the way. Now on to the resources section. This is where we're going to list all of the things that we want AWS CloudFormation to go off and make for us. Now out of all of the sections, this is where you're going to be doing 80 to 90% of your work. Because of this, it's really easy to get overwhelmed by this section. But no matter where you are, just remember that all we're doing is this. We're just finding the resources we want, picking out the properties that we need for it, and adding it to our template. That's it. And again, the mental model to use to operate on it is to pretend like that reference, that resource reference page. So let me hop over here, that the resource reference page here with all these services to just act like you're in the console. I mean, it's really almost completely the same anyways. It's just a big list of those names. And so we're gonna actually follow this workflow that I've been talking about to get our first resource built. But just one more reminder that CloudFormation assumes you know the services. And again, you know, I don't bring this up to make you to make you feel bad. I'm just bringing it up so that you know when you look at this list, you don't feel uh, like you need to know all of it because you just don't. <laughs> I mean, just like how if you open up the console here and you saw some brand new service added, you know, maybe you'll learn it at some point. But if you don't need it, don't sweat it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start here. Before we get anything, we're gonna take a look at the general structure of all resources because granted, these all build something different. <laughs> I don't expect a DynamoDB resource to build an EC2 instance, but they do all follow a similar format. And by similar, I mean they do all follow the same format. So first up, this section is called resources, unsurprisingly. And under resources, the top level key is the known as the logical ID of your resource. It's basically what you want to name this resource for your own purposes. So let me go ahead and type this in logical ID. And this logical ID, you know, let's say we're making a security group, or we could call this my security group. And this is how we would reference this later, right? Not only is this logical ID for referencing, it's also used to generate um, unique names for your stack resources, you know, so that they don't mess with anything else. But for now, we're gonna just leave what it's actually called. And this is the logical ID. Now, inside of the logical ID, and so when we open up this next level, you have two main properties. You have type, and type is just the type of resource. So what is it? Is it a security group? Is it an instance? Is it an IAM role? Like what is it? Well, that's what type is for. And then beyond type, you have properties. So our first two, one of our first two properties here is called properties. And for under the properties key, it's just property and then whatever value there is for it. So for example, uh, we, we talked about it earlier, but when you're making an EC2 instance, one of the properties it has is image ID, right? So, and what it expects is you have to put image ID and then an AMI value. So this could just be something like that, right? And that's all there is to it. That's really all there is. It may look like some of those resources you see are really long and winding. So if we go into an EC2 instance here, let's just open this up and we go into this thing, yeah, I mean, it can look a little bit overwhelming, but all you're doing is you're just listing properties about your instance. So now let's actually make one. We're not gonna start off with an EC2 instance because you know there's quite a bit to that. Um, what we're gonna start off with is just the security group for any future instances. So just a firewall, and we're gonna make it so that the security group allows HTTP traffic and SSH traffic as well. So let me get back to the top level of the reference so I can just show you this workflow. Now, if I wanted to make a security group, right? what, what would I do here if I was in the console? Well, I would go to EC2, and once inside of here, I would then go to security groups, and then I would click create security group and fill in my different details, like the group name, description, and then my inbound and outbound rules. Well, if I wanna make one in CloudFormation, well, I'm gonna to go to this resource reference. I would go to the EC2 console, right? So I'm gonna to go to the EC2 reference list, and then I'm gonna find security groups. And here is security group right here. And here we are, this is the format that we need to follow. And so at the top of every resource here, it's going to give you, look, here's everything that can be on this. But this doesn't mean that you need all of these properties. If you scroll down, you can see whether or not something is required. 
right? So it just tells us right here. It also shows that update requires a statement that we talked about. Um, just a variety of different things. And then also some examples at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and make a security group that allows SSH and HTTP traffic. So let's go ahead. Well, I'll leave this in here until we're done with the other one, just so you can see what's happening. So we're going to call this first one security group. This is going to be the logical ID. This is going to be how we refer to it. Now, you can name this whatever you want. Again, you could call it my security group, but uh, I don't like putting my and your at the beginning of things. I think it's kind of goofy. <laughs> um, so we're going to just leave it at security group. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, the type. Well, what is the type? The type is right here, AWS EC2 Security Group. And this is just the namespace, the service, and in the resource type. This is just their format for it. So I'm gonna actually just copy this right here to avoid typos since they are such an incredible and formidable enemy in this realm. Because I'm telling you, if you do this and you don't catch it right here, your whole template's not gonna work. Now that's not that big of a deal, but similarly, if you do like types, that's also not gonna work. And though our template's smaller right now, <laughs> as it gets bigger, it becomes a, 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 a minefield for typos. So there we go, there's the first thing. There's our type. And we know that the next thing is properties. So what properties do we need to put into here? Well, we could go through this list, and I mean, that's fine. You can, you can do that, and that, that's what you'll end up doing. But when you're getting started, again, the easy way to think is like, well, when I'm in the console, what do I usually need to do here? Well, I usually need to give it a group name, a description, and then a list of rules. We're not going to mess with VPCs just because, as you know, that is an entire iceberg of a topic, so a tip of an iceberg. So we're just going to use the default one. But so there's really three things that we need to do. We need to name it, give it a description, and then give it some inbound rules. So if we come over here, well, here's our first one, group description. So I'm going to just copy that one, come over here put it in and we'll just say security group for SSH and HTTP access. And then the next one we need is the group name and make sure you pay attention to these constraints here. Don't put, you know, different weird characters <laughs> that aren't allowed. And I'll just put in the next property group name and we'll just call this, hmm, let's call this the security group because naming, you know, <laughs> one of the hardest things you have to do. Okay, so we've got those, those are simple, but how do we do these inbound rules? Well, when you look through here, there is nothing called inbound. You probably already, you know, come to the conclusion that the security group ingress is it because it says it right in the description. But if you're ever lost, the easiest thing to do is just come down to the examples. And here, just looking right here, right? You will see, oh, okay, well, this must be it because this looks familiar. We see something for TCP, port 80, from, to, port, and a CIDR IP. And that would be the equivalent of coming over here, adding a rule, doing custom TCP, and putting in port 80, which of course is just HTTP style traffic. So that's what we need to do next. We need to do an ingress rule. Now, this is where CloudFormation documentation can be a little, a little, you know, confusing. Because the thing is, is looking at this. So first up, let's go ahead and put this pro this property in. And this was something that I always had trouble with when I first got started. This doesn't really tell you how a security group ingress rule should be structured. Um, the only reason that we would know it from these docs is just because of this one example here. Well, look, it needs an IP protocol, a from port, to port, and CIDR IP. So how would you know that? Well, it's because what's actually happening here is this is a list of a different type of CloudFormation resource. Specifically, it is, let me go back here, a security group ingress. So let me go ahead and open that up. It's a resource within a resource. Now, some cloud formation resources act like this, where you can define them right in a particular resource, or you could define them separately. So we're gonna just put that, we're just going to put it in, but if we really wanted to, and so in just looks like this, how you would expect. Here's the ingress rule, the ingress rule property with the rule right in it. But here on the ingress resource itself, we can see all of the possible properties that we can put on it. And if we go down to examples, we can see how you can create it as a separate resource, right? And then just point it towards a particular security group, right? 
So here, the way that we do it, we'll get into these later, but this is how you can make it outside of it. Now, this is one of those hidden properties, you know, behind the scenes things. So here looking at this, we see, we know that we need an IP address or an IP protocol from port to port inside our IP. Yes, there's other options, but you know, we're not gonna go through every single one of them. Instead, we're just going to stick with what we would do in here. And that first thing is going to be IP protocol. So let me go ahead and grab that here from the security group ingress docs, IP protocol, and these are the different ones it can be. So we're gonna open up an array here, IP protocol, and it's going to be TCP. And then after that, we know that we need a port range and the port range is, you know, here it's just one field that you can split with a hyphen, but in the actual CloudFormation resources, you can't do that. You do actually need to specify the from and the to range. So let's start with the from port. Well, we want this rule to be very constrained. And so we just want to keep it at 80. And as far as the two port goes, well, that's also going to be the same. And the reason I'm going to the, doc, the docs here isn't because I don't know it, but I want you to get comfortable with this flow. And you will be, if you're just beginning to build CloudFormation templates, jumping to the docs quite a bit. So let's grab the two port. And so here we go, 80. And of course, you know, if we wanted this to be a real range, you know, we could just do something like that. And then this would clear everything between 22 and 80, but you probably know that that's bad practice. And so the final thing that we need, if we go over here and we take a look at our console, well, is the source. And one of those sources can be a CIDR range. Obviously it can be other things if you've done stuff. It can be a security group among other things. But even though in the console there's only one field, in CloudFormation, instead, there is a list of optional properties. So for example, if you specify CIDR block or CIDR IP, that's how you give this a, a source that is a range, right? However, if you were to specify, say, security group ID, well, then you would have to, you know, then you wouldn't put in the CIDR IP and instead just reference a different security group which is something, refs is something again that we'll talk about later. But for now, we're gonna stick with CIDR IP. So let me just go ahead and grab that property. We'll put this in Whoop. and do the range of everywhere. So this is saying that this security group right here, it's just saying, hey, we accept HTTP traffic, which is just TCP traffic on port 80 um, from anywhere. And this should look pretty familiar. Now that we've drawn the comparison to the console, right? This would just be like having this rule right here. If we named this um, the security group, right? And we gave it this whole description right here. Now these are practically identical. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of using the console to your advantage. So if we needed to add a rule for uh, SSH traffic, Right, we would just come over here, select SSH, and it would pre-fill things for us. And if we wanted it to be from everywhere, you know, we could just select that and be on our happy way. So how do we do this in CloudFormation? Well, you know, since it's good to be lazy every once in a while, we're just going to copy and paste it <laughs> and just change uh, 80 here to 22 and then we would be good to go. Now, if you're curious as to why this doesn't say HTTP or SSH is because, well, that's not an actual IP protocol we can select. TCP is what that's happening over, but in the AWS console, you know, they just, they just make a convenience thing for us here by adding these little side things. But even if you select SSH, you can see that the protocol is indeed still TCP. Okay, and so with that, our first resource is built. Not too bad. I mean, yeah, there is a lot of documentation hopping, but it doesn't matter what you're looking at. This is gonna be a really good workflow to make sure that you know what's going on. And so this is leveraging past learning, in this case, how we would work with security groups in the console with new learning. And that's just coming to the security group in the CloudFormation document documentation page for the security groups and drawing parallels.